ago when we had WrestleMania 27, the entire build-up to that event was the fact that it was being billed as the greatest WrestleMania of all time, the most memorable, most monumental WrestleMania pay-per-view event of all time. Of course, it failed to reach those standards. We had a terrible main event between John Cena and The Miz. The match was half decent, but the entire show, that match itself, felt like something you'd see on Monday Night Raw. That was the first seeds that we saw planted with the John Cena and Rock feud. So it was pretty much a setup for WrestleMania 28. We had Triple H versus Undertaker that night. Probably match the night by far. Solid match. Boring as hell, in my opinion. Predictable as hell. Don't even... It, that was the match of the night. And it wasn't even all that great compared to what we've seen in the past. Compared to Shawn Michaels versus Undertaker. But even still, this is not about WrestleMania 27. Then we had WrestleMania 28 last year. A great event, in my opinion. Amazingly awesome pay-per-view event that made up for WrestleMania 27 the last year, or the previous year, I should say. Um, 26 was good. 25 was lackluster, in my opinion. 24 was the last good event before WrestleMania 28. So moving on to WrestleMania 29, the build-up to this year's show was shitty. Extremely, extremely shitty. We had the only matches that we knew confirmed for the show, it passed the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, and by that point in time, we should know at least half the card. We only knew Rock vs. Cena, and Swagger versus Del Rio. Both matches, which were in jeopardy, immediately following the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. The Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, after it was um, rumored that we might see CM Punk added to the WWE title match, or that we might see Jack Swagger removed from the world title match, following his controversy with the whole DUI shit and all that stuff. Even those matches weren't confirmed for the pay-per-view. So that, that should have been the telling point as to how this pay-per-view was going to go down. Unlike WrestleMania 27, this pay-per-view was not being billed as the greatest of all time and whatever and some shit like that. So, from what we got last night at WrestleMania, I was not disappointed. It was almost everything I expected, and I'll tell you exactly why. Am I pissed about the pay-per-view? Hell yeah, I am, but I'm not disappointed because it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. Should I get pissed about something that I thought was going to be predictable? Probably not, but I had a lot of gripes with last night's show, which I'm going to be breaking down in this video. So, even before, as I was talking about before, the build-up to this entire event was shitty as fuck. I mean, we had the John Cena Rock match. Rock was hardly even on the fucking show every single week, so that was one thing. Um, so, the WWE title match felt didn't feel as nearly as important as it did last year between Rock and Cena in the main event. Um, the WWE, or I'm sorry, the, the Punk Taker match, a terrible build for that match. The match itself was going to be great, and I'll get to that in a little bit later on in the video. But the build to that match was extremely disappointing. We had the world title match. I didn't give two fucks about that match. Fandango debuted a mere month ago, and he's getting on the fucking car before the fucking United States champion, Antonio Cesaro. You got Kofi Kingston, I got a guy who's worked his ass off for the last five years and doesn't even get a match at WrestleMania in favor of a guy who just debuted on fucking Dancing with the Stars a month ago. Jericho getting put from a WWE title match last year to being fucking on the uh, match with a former NXT rookie. A guy that would just debut a mere month ago, as I said before. The man, as I was saying before, who main evented the main uh, WrestleMania 27, defeated John Cena to retain his WWE title in the main event of WrestleMania 27, bumped to the fucking pre show last night in a four minute fucking match. It's an hour long fucking pre show, and they, re they relegate it to a four minute match. How do you have a. How do, I, I just don't understand how you have a four minute match. On an hour-long pre-show. The pre-shows are almost always a half an hour long. This one's an hour long. If this one was a half an hour long, I don't even want to know how long the size of the title match is going to be. Between The Miz and Wade Barrett. They had a great match a few weeks ago on Monday Night Raw. I was really looking forward to this match. I have yet to watch it, quite honestly. I was on the road on the way to my WrestleMania viewing party. Thank fucking lord, that's another thing, too, that I didn't pay 70 fucking bucks to watch this pay-per-view. So glad I went over to someone else's watch the, someone else's house to watch this pay-per-view. That would have been a complete waste of money, so I feel sympathetic towards those that actually paid their hard-earned money to waste their money on this piece of shit. But I digress. Going back to the pre-show for a second, a four-minute match. I'm glad that The Miz won. Barrett wasn't doing jack shit with the, with the uh, Intercontinental Championship anyway, but I'm glad that I heard... Um, Miz was receptive, or the crowd was receptive to the Miz's IC Championship win. So that's great to see. That's one thing, but a four-minute fucking IC title match on a pre-show, in an hour-long pre-show, you couldn't have taken out one or two video packages for a ten-minute IC title match? That's a joke all in itself. And then we get to the start of the pay-per-view. They kick off the pay-per-view with some Hurricane Sandy thing, and then they had the Special Olympics thing later in the show. That's fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But why at WrestleMania? There was other guys, as I said before, Antonio Cesaro, Kofi Kingston, 
the eight-person tag team match was Brody Spice, Tensai, the Funkadactyls versus Team Road Scholars and the Bell Twins. That was cut from the show as well. You couldn't have aired America the Beautiful? I mean, they do that every single year at WrestleMania. Am I extremely pissed? That um, am I, Do I feel offended that they didn't air it? Probably not, but I do feel sympathetic towards those that are offended by that, them not having um, someone sing America the, Beautiful, America the Beautiful to kick off the show. It's extremely disrespectful. And not only that, but they had Diddy sing later in the night. Don't get me wrong, I like the Coming Home song that he sang, and it was nice and all. It was short and sweet, but why in the blue hell would you have Diddy perform his song before fucking America the Beautiful at the start of the show? That was disrespectful as all fuck, so that wasn't a good way to kick off the show. We had the six-person tag team match with Seamus Big Show Orton versus The Shield. Decent match, but I can quite honestly tell you right now, The Shield's matches are getting less and less exciting every single time they compete. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with the team themselves. I mean, they're not doing anything new than, the, than what they were doing four or five months ago, but it's just the lack of opponents that they have. I mean, after WrestleMania, who the fuck are they going to face? And this, this, before you only sidetrack for a second... The whole problem with this WrestleMania is the fact that we don't know what's going to be happening after this as far as an aftermath goes. I don't know what, where we go from here. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I didn't know what we would be getting at WrestleMania 29 as far as the undercard goes. Unpredictability sometimes is a good thing. In this case, it wasn't because they didn't have any, any obvious long-term booking. So that was bad booking on their part. But anyways, the Shield wins. Happy about that. Big Show knocks out both Sheamus and Orton. Logical move. But did it really need to fucking happen? Big Show was a heel a fucking month ago. You don't need to have him turn heel at WrestleMania. That could have been better to see for Randy Orton, a guy who was oh so desperate in need of a heel turn. Did it need to happen at Mania? No, but I really hope that Big Show isn't the one to go full-fledged heel going forward. I like Big Show as a heel. I'm, not, I'm glad that he's not a pussy face anymore. But even still, why not have Randy Orton? Why not save that spot for Randy Orton? Maybe he will turn. Maybe he's going to turn tonight in Monday Night Raw. I don't know. But having it being executed on the grand stage of them all would have made much more sense. But nonetheless, that's not even the worst of it. Shield wins. Happy with that. We get the Jericho versus Fandango match later in the night. A nice match. But again, why does Fandango get a match before guys like Kofi Kingston, um, the U.S. champion perhaps, and Tony Cesaro? I just didn't get that. Fandango wins. I'm fine with that. If Jericho won, it would have seemed pointless because he's taken off soon anyway. They're, uh, they're obviously behind Fandango, so... Or how the fuck you say his name? So I'm fine with him winning. Um, that wasn't the match wasn't bad. It was a nice match. So I'm fine with that thing. Ryback versus Mark Henry. Now this is one of the top matches that I was looking forward to <clears throat> going into the show. Ryback has always been one of my favorite WWE superstars. Mark Henry is a fucking beast as well. So that's why I was looking forward to this matchup. And the build has been pretty decent for the most part, with both guys as being an immovable object versus an unstoppable force at WrestleMania. Clash of the Titans, pretty much. So I was looking forward to it. The match, it wasn't really the fa it wasn't really the fact that it was slow and plotting. I didn't really have a problem with that. What I had a problem with was the finish. Ryback goes for the shell shock. Ry or Mark Henry ver reverses, lands on top of Ryback for the one, two, three. Is that supposed to be your fucking face of the company? You haven't been beat by a forty-plus-year-old guy at WrestleMania? Don't get me wrong. I'm a huge Mark Henry fan. Huge Mark Henry fan. Love the Hall of Fame, all that shit, but. Mark Henry, I'm seeing Ryback hasn't won a fucking pay-per-view match since July. You can also make the argument you can make the argument that Mark Henry hasn't won a pay-per-view match since WrestleMania 28. I understand that, but who's going to be the face of your company five years from now? Mark Henry, who's going to be retiring in a month or so from now, or Ryback, a fresh face that was being pushed to the moon a few months ago, hasn't even won a match on pay-per-view since his rise to the top. So that doesn't make any sense either. So they have Mark Henry win, fine and all, okay, but Ryback's completely buried by this point in time, so, but that's not even that, it, it, it's not even that. Post-match, they had Ryback deliver the shell shock to Mark Henry anyway. Why not just save that for a later date if they're going to be, if they want to save this up to be a huge move and whatnot, because they teased it a few times during the course of the matchup, why not just save that for Extreme Rules if that's the case? Wasting it on WrestleMania after he had already lost is a complete waste of time. Mark Henry loses... Uh, he doesn't gain any momentum after winning the matchup because he got buried by Ryback afterwards. Ryback doesn't gain anything because he lost the match. It was a lose-lose situation, so that was a complete waste of time. Um, what else do we get here? Or the eight-man tag team match, which didn't even happen. I'm happy that it didn't happen because it was a complete waste of time anyway. But Road Scholars, two guys that should have been facing the New Age Outlaws at WrestleMania should have been on this card. Didn't make the cut for some reason, so fuck that. World Championship match between Alberto Del Rio and Jack Swagger. 
got, I don't know how many minutes, but the match was good. Jack Swagger gets a fucking jobber entrance at WrestleMania. If anyone is going to have that happen to him, I'm glad it was Jack Swagger after the whole DUI thing. I don't see him getting suspended at this point. That If that was his punishment, I'm fine with that, but even DUI or not, regardless, he should get an entrance at WrestleMania. This guy is your number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship. Once the promo for Del Rio and Swagger ended, and then I saw Jack Swagger in the ring, I was like, oh, guess we know who's winning now. I mean, it was pretty obvious before, but even still, you need to make it at least somewhat a legitimate threat. You need to make Swagger somewhat of a legitimate threat to the World Championship for us for you know, for us to suspend our disbelief to think that he might actually win. Because some people are predicting a Swagger win. I don't know why people were thinking he was going to win. If anything, I thought Ziggler was going to cash in. I thought I knew that he was go not going to, but after the tag team title match, which we'll get to in a second as well, after that happened earlier on in the show, I thought there might be a chance that Dolph Ziggler might actually cash in. It didn't fucking happen. It's WrestleMania, the biggest show of the year. You can't have Dolph Ziggler cash in at the most opportune moment. That didn't make any sense either. There is nobody in the world title scene right now that Del Rio can continue to face. I do not want to see Jack Swagger versus Del Rio. The feud continue, that's fine, but it does not need to be over the world championship. The match was good and all. Jack Swagger looks like a joke for not getting an entrance at WrestleMania and then losing to Del Rio five minutes later. I don't get that either. The tag team title match felt like you felt like something you see on Raw. Well wrestled matchup, Dolph Ziggler takes a pin. That's that's a guy that's supposed to be the future world heavyweight champion in a week from now. You know, whenever he cashes in, regardless of whether it's tonight on Raw, at Extreme Rules, at Money in the Bank pay-per-view in July, I don't know when it's going to be, but that guy's a future world champion, and you have him take the pinfall. I understand why they didn't have Langston take the pinfall, but that's not even the point. The point is, was that the tag team title match felt like something you'd see on Raw. Moving on to the top matches here, Punk and Taker undoubtedly hands down match tonight. No question about it. The only problem was, is that... It was not as great as Triple H and Taker was from last year or Michaels and whatever. This was match of the this was match of the night by far, but the sad thing was is that it wasn't even I don't know. I mean it was a great match and match of the year candidate by far, but was it really as good as past matches in WrestleMania? And I'm not complaining because that was a fantastic match. I really, really enjoyed it. I didn't think Punk was gonna win, but I really, really did enjoy that matchup between Taker and Punk. But even in that sense, it wasn't even as great as the other matches were last year. And that's just pathetic as well. And with that being said, I mean, the Living Color entrance is probably the highlight of the night for me when CM Punk made his entrance to Living Color being there live. That was amazing. I really, really enjoyed that. So I'm glad he got his WrestleMania entrance. And that was really well done. That was probably the highlight of the night. Triple H versus Brock Lesnar expected more from those guys. That was um that was a flat match. It had the tough task of pre or proceeding um going right afterwards the punk and taker match so that sucks for them but it was a solid match and a strong effort from both men but triple h going over does nothing for me how do you expect brock lesnar to be a draw in the future if he continues to lose and after he lost to johnson last year he beat triple h i understand that and but why did triple h have to win here i don't care about him i don't care about triple h he has a cool new look and all but i don't care who he faces next if they want to have any success with brock lesnar he should have won here and then johnson and the rock the match in the beginning, no one gave two shits. It felt like a completely rushed entrance. No one gave a shit about the entire match, except for the final ten minutes, which were exciting. I'll give you that much. But something should have happened. I felt like I was waiting for something to happen on this show. No surprises, no nothing. Nothing really monumental. This is something that you're going to forget about a week from now. Um, as I said before, probably just building towards WrestleMania 30. John's getting a new WWE champion. Whoopi, don't really know or don't really care who he's going to be facing for next for the WWE title. And then Rock hugging it out with John Cena to close the show. What the fuck is that bullshit? Calling John Cena a bitch during the course of the match. Calling him a faggot a couple weeks ago on Raw. And then at WrestleMania, he's making out with him at the top of the stage. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? That's, that's, I don't understand the show. I didn't really enjoy it. It was predictable. It was all fucked. And sometimes predictability isn't always a bad thing, as I always say. But even still, the results were logical. But I saw them coming from a mile away. Hence why I didn't enjoy this pay-per-view. As I said before, match tonight, Punker, Punk and Undertaker, but hopefully they can deliver on, ton on tonight's episode of Monday Night Raw and going forward. But um, even with that being said, thanks for watching. Really do appreciate it. Make sure to like, subscribe, drop a comment below with your thoughts on the show. Thanks for watching. This is GSM, signing out. Till next time, guys.